Hi, welcome to Shorty Service Station Redux. What do I mean by that? Well, over the years I've added a lot of build videos to my YouTube channel. But until recently, they were primarily just photographs with music. And I was hoping to tell the story of how they were built just using the photographs. But recently with the ability to add narration, I've been told that it helps quite a bit. And so I've decided to go back to a few of my more popular ones in the past and add narration to them. This is the first of them and we'll be looking at building Shorty Service Station by Railscale Models. Shorty Service Station is a nice kit that Railscale Models has put out. I had planned to build it but I was going to change the color scheme. I had been influenced by this photograph of Eddie's service station and the yellow and green really grabbed me. So I decided to use that color scheme. First I braced my wood and added together the parts that needed to be put together. There is also a side that was covered with corrugated steel that I wanted to have board and batten instead. So I just added some battens to the plane walls that came in the kit. And once I had them all attached, I cut them even with the edges of the walls. The kit has side walls for both sides and I kept the clapboard on the other side and now had my board and batten walls. I now had all of the walls ready for painting. I first started by masking the bottom of the walls and I was going to put the faded yellow on the upper portion. I mixed together a pale yellow and a mustard yellow and then dry brushed it on the upper walls. I knew I was going to be covering this with a stain that would darken it a little later. Then I got my green paint ready to put on the lower portion of the walls. It was an olive green and again I went ahead and dry brushed it on the bottoms of the walls. Once I was done applying the paint on the walls, I let it dry some and then went over all of the color with Hunterline Driftwood Stain. This darkened it and added an aged look and the walls were coming out very much like that photo that I had of Eddie's garage, which was the color I was going after. I also painted all of the trim and the windows in the same green. And at this point I was pretty much done with the coloring of the building. And it was time to start working on the sign to go over it. I found this gas sign online and liked it, but I wanted to change the top of it so I could put in shorties. I found an Art Deco font that I liked and added that. And then I printed the sign out and I used a sponge technique to rust it. And I continued on to adding signs to other portions of the building. Again, these are all printouts that I found online. And now it was time to start gluing the building together. I used my blocks to make sure that it was keeping square as I was gluing them. And I glued together the sub-assemblies of the buildings that would go on the side of the garage. Then for the covered entry, I used a distress crayon to put dirt on the flooring that led into it. Then I glued that on the inside of the garage using blocks to hold it in place while the glue dried. I wanted to have some interior detail inside the garage portion where the doors would be open, so I added some interior joists onto the wall. Then I started working on the tar paper roof that was going to be going over the side structures. And the main roof came as pieces with the shingles already pre-cut on them. I just needed a little bit of weathering 
and assembly before they go over the main building. At this point I test fitted my side buildings onto it and was ready to glue them on. And I used some of my weights to hold them in place while the glue was drying. The next thing I did was to start adding rafter tails to the overhang of the roof on the side buildings. And I also had to add a couple of rafters into the exposed portion of the roof. Next up I made the light that was going to go over the sign on the front of the building. And I attached it to the building. And also added some more signs to the front of the structure. At this point I started working on some of the other details to go on the building. I added a couple of smokestacks and put a plumbing pipe on it and went ahead and put signs on all the other sides of the building and also added a light inside the enclosed alcove. At this point the structure was pretty much done and I started turning my attention to the base it was going to go on. I used a piece of foam core and put some fine gravel around the back of the building and then painted a base that was going to be underneath the gravel in front. I put together a sign that I had gotten from some pieces and started collecting some other gas station detail parts. And I started painting and weathering them so I could use them around the diorama. I had also made a lamp that could go alongside my sign. And then I started rusting some of the pieces that I had made. I like working with artist pigments if I'm going to be weathering or rusting something. They give you a nice texture and you have a lot of control over them. At this point I glued the building down to the base and added some fine gravel in front. And I started adding some oil spots and other textures to the gravel in front of the building. And next was time to start adding some foliage around the garage and the sides and the back. I really like using Martin Welberg products. He has a great line with a wide selection and I enjoy using them for landscaping around buildings. I was also adding some of the other details that I had put together in different places around the building. In some cases I'd put something somewhere and see how it looked and decide if I wanted to keep it there or move it somewhere else or add some other things around it. One of the things I wanted was some cases of Pepsi bottles around my vending machine. So I found a Pepsi sign online and printed it out smaller and smaller until I could put it on the case around my bottles. Then I put those in place. I started looking at all the pieces that I had and couldn't decide whether there was anything else I wanted to add or wanted to remove. So at that point I was pretty much sure I was done with it. And I decided to go outside and take some pictures in our local park, which is one of the places I like to go to take pictures of dioramas. I always feel that getting an actual landscape behind it lends an air of authenticity to something you've built. I had been wanting to build rail scale models Shorty service station for quite a while ever since I saw it. And I'm glad I was finally able to build it. I really enjoyed working with it and I'm very happy with the way it came out. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this revamp of Shorty Service Station.